Two members now. And that was a nice little satellite report. We'll go to another one later. Two members from Shudo Echo, Tony and Anthony and Ivor Davies, you know? Mm. Yeah, we know. We know. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little, or have you met each other prior to No, oh, I think we've met each other. Oh, we met at AMI. Yeah, we've met uh -huh. in the studio. Uh -huh. You've bumped into in studios. You've got a good track record at the moment, haven't you? Yeah. One, does. two, and going for your third. Yeah, well, we hope so, haven't we? Did you think that might happen when the group first came together? I mean, you've been around for a while, each of you, separately, and the other members. So did you have the feel that you had the right blend? How do you know at the time? We just saw it was just a sort of type of thing like the band got together, it was a fun thing, we enjoyed yeah. what we did, we played these sort of little inner city places and suddenly a crowd, we started getting a following really quick. Right. And uh, the next step was to get picked up by a record company and see what happened from there. John Punter's uh, been a good punter for you, hasn't he? Sort of the man behind your productions. How did you find him? Where did you find him? It's well, a we went company, wasn't it? It was the company that actually got him for it? Well, what happened is that uh, we went to EMI and we were sort of in the stage of uh, trying to work out what we were going to do for a producer. They said, like, guys, we've got to find a producer. Have you got yeah. anyone in mind? And we're sort of going, oh, well, we like this guy. Five said, Davies. And we, like, <laughs> <laughs> we like this guy. And they said, oh, well, this will cost you this much and that this much. And, and that was just when Reflex had just been... Right. It was just new on the... And the our, guy that was head of the a &R said, oh, have a listen to this. This is a guy called John Punner who had done this and that and that and this. Just run through some of the people he'd put mm -hmm. in. Well, he did Brian Ferry's um, solo projects, mm -hmm. Hard Rain, that sort of... A lot of Japan things. Right. He did, uh, was it Polaroids? And Quiet Life as well, over those albums. You also have the Peter Gabriel thing. How does that tie in, that you um, have some connection through Peter Gabriel? I'm not sure here. Is um, that with Marcello, the film clip? Well, yeah, or? Peter Gabriel... Um, Actually, Peter Gabriel is sort of strange connection because he asked us to do his last American tour, which was the same time that Bowie was doing his right. American tour that he wanted us to do as well. Uh -huh. And I had to turn down both of those because of Razorback. Right. Um, and at the same time, Peter Gabriel had mentioned somewhere along, along the line that he wanted to produce an album for us as well. Right. And he also uh, was associated vaguely with the new film clip that we did. Uh, he kind of had something to do with that. Mar Marcello, the guy who did the film clip, is his sort of director. Right. And so Peter Gabriel actually heard Don't Believe Anymore and made a few suggestions and whatever. We, n we still have yet to meet him. I see. <laughs> I just heard you mention Peter Gabriel as you walked in. I thought there might have been a, a tie up. Well, he's a pretty inspiring person <laughs> uh -huh. for the times. Right. I mean, he was right ahead of himself. But, but there's no, in fact, tie. Who did your clips? Well, our first two clips were done by a uh, guy, Peter McLean. Right. Sydney. Yeah. Sydney. Sydney, yeah, Sydney person. And uh, the last clip was done by Steve Hopkins, who was Russell McKay's art director on the Ultravox Vienna Duran clips. Isn't that true that Marcello had something to do with Russell too? Well, they all, all, all of these guys at one time worked for Russell Mulcahy. It's all one big family. <laughs> yeah, it's all turning out to be one Well, Steve family. Hopkins actually did uh, Taking the Town for us. Right. Well, so, yeah, it's all So that's how it comes together. <laughs> what about listening, your first hit single? Will that be shot out overseas and yeah, you're looking forward to move? That's the first one they're going to take overseas. They're, they've got their eyes set on our newest single, Dancing, yeah. which is the new one here. Yeah. That's the one that they seem to want to go with overseas, but they're going to go through the routine and release them in their order. Why is it they always do that overseas record companies? They always want to reverse the order. They're that just they... really contrary people, yeah. Mm. <laughs> All right, let's have a look at Dancing Until Midnight, Shudo Echo. And this is the one possibly that will go out first overseas. Maybe it'll go out third. We'll let the record companies work that out. Here we go. Look quickly, Boy George and the Deltones on the same front page, I can dig it. Hey, that was the big welcome, Pee Wee. That was the best little campaign I've seen happen for a local group for many, many years. Who orchestrated it? The manager. Who is? The wife. <laughs> da da. She's learning quick, eh? Yeah, she's really Done a great job. Carla, beautiful job. I think um, when we need publicity, guys, straight to Pee Wee's wife. Fine. We just get signed on the dotted line. That ran over, what, a couple of weeks? How did yeah, you get tied weeks. up with the bingo side of it, too? 
Well, we were, you know, we were thinking about something to get involved with a commercial of some sort. I mean, there's been mm -hmm. a lot of talk. We had a lot of offers and so on. And we couldn't think it was, there was no way the, the, the band's image was pretty straight and clean cut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No more, don't yeah. say no more. <laughs> and uh, we thought, what are we going to do? You know, no, no, no booze, no cigarettes, but gambling. But, uh, uh, true Aussie. Yeah. Yeah. True Aussie style. <laughs> yeah, good Aussie style. <laughs> yes, yeah, okay, good. last time you were here, you said, we're going to get an album out, and it was a KTEL album. How many sales has it done? Well, it's about 50,000 now. Just a small one. And, yeah, it's been good. <laughs> yeah, it's been good. Yeah, it's been good. <laughs> Poor buggers. Yeah, it's been really good. Oh, and the single, like Get a Job, it's done well. Uh, it's done really well. It didn't chart, unfortunately, but... Um, who cares? Who cares, yeah. <laughs> yeah, with an <laughs> album. The words out of one. And also, an upcoming tour, That uh, how many dates is it? We've got three weeks on tour. Right. Down and south, uh, through Victoria, South Australia. Back up to New South Wales. It starts very shortly. Starts on Sunday. But already sold out. Yeah, which is good. Fantastic. <laughs> I really, yeah, it really good. is good. We're not uh, used to that. It's really good. I mean, yeah, I mean you're taking it very lightly. When you think back to the 60s, how big you were then, you still weren't as big as you are today. No, I don't think we were that big. I, I mean, compared with the houses we're getting now, we weren't. I mean, oh. we were living in, in those days in the shadow of the solo performer. Mm. And uh, guys like O'Keefe and Cole Joy, um, Dig Richards, those guys. Yeah. There were, a band or a vocal group wasn't uh, in the same sort of standing in those days. You know, it wasn't until the Beatles came along that groups really started to uh, to take up. D Danny is your lead singer, right? How old yeah. is he? 34, Danny. He's been with you now how long? 18 months. Was he a great fan of yours back when he was a kid, like you would have been uh, on top then? Well, he came, he, I mean, he came from England. He's English, um, oh. from Oldham. So but uh, he's been here for quite some time. So he does remember the Delta, he just had but he was a real, he's a real Presley fan, he comes from that time and that was his go. And these days you use those newfangled drum kits and... Yeah, right, well, we've, we've, it's just very strange for our band to see um, a Simmons kit up there, but uh, it seems to be working fine. We heard the, uh, the electric drums used with a band called the Nylons, a Canadian group. Right. And the sound of the Simmons seemed to, um, to complement the voices and... Uh, so we thought we'd give it a try, and it's worked out. What about other gear? Have you changed it? You're not using a Fairlight, are you? <coughs> no, but uh, on the next album we'll be uh, we'll be looking at a Fairlight. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking at I was just reading your article <laughs> in Rolling Stone. Yeah, it's really he's interesting. He's the king yeah. of the Fairlight. Yeah, king of the Fairlight. And, and, and Ivo reckons that people don't uh, exploit the Fairlight well enough, I read somewhere. What it's, did you mean by well, that? Well, <coughs> it's like a computer is sort of an ongoing thing. You can never really exploit it. Um, the, the main thing about it is because it's a, it's a numbers machine, like it's a computer, you really have to understand the numbers of music. And a lot of people these days, like we're talking about writing stuff down, uh, a lot of people don't read music, so therefore they don't yeah. communicate. The computer only understands numbers, so uh -huh. you know, that's it. Mm. No one ever makes it to the end of the manual. Bon bon. <laughs> <laughs> They're making too much money before they get to the end of the manual. <laughs> well, some are. Um, uh, young Einstein, how did you get involved with that? What's it all about? Well, it was a, it's a movie been made by a guy called Yahoo Serious. Which is not his real name. Is it? Which it is. So yeah, he had it changed by deep. <laughs> it really is. It's, it's really quite serious. And he, he uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, he, uh, <laughs> he came along to one of our shows. My daughter Roxanne was doing the movie with him. She was playing the role of Einstein's daughter. Right. And uh, they came along to see one of our shows at Newcastle. What part were you playing in? And he, well, he asked me, did I want to do something in the movie? And of course, I'd you know, love to. You know, he jumped straight in and had some thoughts about it afterwards because there's such a, um, an interesting mob of people that um, I wonder what I was getting myself in for. As it turned out, it was good fun. You got a job. But I got the job. Cue yes. to a song. Gotcha. Delta, <laughs> get a job. Roxanne, you say. I say Roxanne. Yes. She's not here at the moment.